Welcome back. The world's most valuable technology firms powered the Nasdaq 100 and to a great degree the S&P 500 towards big, big rallies this year as investor appetite for artificial intelligence overwhelmed concerns about the effect of higher interest rates in 2023. As we turn towards 2024, however, our next guest says the broad-based rallies on the back of optimism towards rate cuts could mean the Magnificent Seven's market dominance is at an end. For more, we're joined by Eric Jackson, founder and president of EMJ Capital. Thanks a lot for coming in. Thanks, Paul. So it was just last week when the Fed made an announcement. Everything seems to have changed since then in terms of the market's outlook on, on rate cuts. The Fed has, uh, through its dot plots, has signaled 75 basis points of reductions. I spoke to a veteran uh, fixed income expert today. He sees 150 basis points of cuts uh, coming next year. What does this mean to the, uh, the large cap, the mega cap uh, tech stocks like the Magnificent Seven? Well, just since that announcement uh, by Jay Powell, uh, th those stocks have really, you know, been in pause, and you've seen a lot of rotation out of those names and into uh, smaller cap stocks. Both the Russell 2000 has has had a huge rally in the past few days, as well as some of the uh, the growth, the smaller growth tech stocks that the likes that we usually see in the the Kathy Wood Arc portfolio, and that makes sense. In if you think for a second that those stocks were really the first ones to shudder in the face of rising inflation. And they actually started to pull back a, a year before the Fed actually started to hike rates. So they, they peaked out in February of 2021, uh, whereas the Fed didn't start hiking till March of 22. So it's been a, real, a two and a half year uh, real drawdown for, for a lot of these stocks. And now, as we're kind of looking ahead to the rate cuts, uh, even though they haven't happened yet, these, a lot of these stocks started rallying in mid-November when uh, the U.S. CPI printed at 3.1% and people started to feel like that we were at peak, peak hikes. Skeptics might say that the ARC-style stocks, uh, high growth uh, but no profit uh, stocks, high revenue, no profit stocks rallied when interest rates were, had their, had their heyday when interest rates were at 1% or 2%. Uh, can, can stocks like that make significant gains when we are coming down from 5%? Well, they, they, they rallied because, you know, rates were low, obviously, and, and there was an appetite for growth. And so there's a high correlation between those stocks, crypto um, and, and uh, biotech, things like that. So all of these all of these parts of the market are really obviously the most sensitive to to rates. And so it does make sense that, you know, if we are at peak rates now and, and facing cuts that, you know, these these types of companies that, whose valuations have really been decimated mm -hmm. compared to where they were in February 2021 would kind of see the most of, of the re relief rally. The question is, can it continue? Is it going to be like a five-week rally like mm -hmm. we saw at the beginning of 2023? Or are we in perhaps for a multi-month rally? I, I t tend to think the latter. I think we're going to see something similar to what we saw in, in August of 1982, where there was a 10-month rally, you know, when the last time that, that inflation really, you know, bit the dust. Um, and, and took the NASDAQ up 100%. If you see 100% rise in the, in the NASDAQ over the next 10 months, these archetype stocks or biotech stocks or crypto are going to be a multiple of that, probably something like 300 to 400% potential rally over, over the coming year, if, if it holds true. Interesting. And, and you must believe that the, the multiples on the mega caps are too high now, and, and, and those stocks will stall, do you? I, I see them as sort of like a mixed uh, bag, the, the seven. I mean, there are some names that I really like, NVIDIA, Apple, Tesla. I would probably, you know, Meta, I'd probably put at the top of the list I'm most interested in. I think that they'll continue to do well. I think, though, that you cannot expect the same returns in 2024 that you saw for those names in 2023. Uh, and so I would rather put more capital to work from an opportunity cost perspective into some of these these beaten down smaller names. Interesting. One stock you like, I'm not sure it qualifies as a beaten down smaller name, but it is Shopify, a very, a very well known stock here in Canada. You, you think there's more to go in Shopify, which has rallied by more than 100% so far this year. Yeah, but uh, certainly it's it's way off, uh, I don't know, beaten down <laughs> compared to its 2021 highs. Good, good point, good point. It's well <laughs> off its high, that is correct. So, uh, I, I st but, uh, you know, they've kind of been forgotten about. There's, there's a lot of names like Shopify, Coinbase, Affirm, who have had remarkable 2023s, um, done better or almost as well as names like NVIDIA, and yet they've sort of been ignored. Shopify I love in the sense that 
you know, they're, they're the go-to for anyone who's interested in competing in e-commerce who's not Amazon, which is basically the rest of the world. And, um, and, and they've grown their moat uh, in terms of, of how they can help small to medium-sized businesses in, in, in that space over these last two and a half, three years. So uh, they're led by a very smart management team, very technically capable. Um, they're well positioned for the, for the next five, 10 years. So I, I, like, I like them very much. There's been no shortage of uh, horrific news from the cryptocurrency world this year, but Coinbase shares that we just saw have uh, have done very, very well despite that. Why do you like Coinbase as a player in the crypto world? A lot of their competition is, has either uh, diminished or gone <laughs> out gone, of business. Gone, gone so they really mm-hmm. kind of are the last man standing in this, mm-hmm. in this space. Um, uh, what's also interesting about them is that they made gobs of money in 2020 and 2021. Uh, even though some think of like all of crypto as sort of fly by night. And um, we've seen a rally in these last five, six weeks in, um, in crypto, including all the, the alt coins. And that's when Coinbase makes a lot more money. You know, when they, when they see the, the ARPU for their user base um, trading in those types of coins versus just in B, you know, Bitcoin or Ethereum, they make a lot more money. So if we're in for a sustained rally, like as, as I was saying before, over the next 10 months, let's say, um, Coinbase is going to be a big beneficiary. And, and, and if crypto start, goes back to all-time highs, they will make a lot of money again. Carvana uh, qualifies as beaten, being beaten down, although it has begun rallying again. It provides an online platform for, for car sales. The stock almost evaporated a couple of years ago. Uh, it's been the subject of a lot of uh, analyst and, and investor commentary since then. You like this one too. I do, yeah. So there, a year ago, like uh, they were down to three bucks a share, I think, and uh, basically dropped 98% yep. in all of 2020. If we can get a five-year view control room yeah. of Carvana, we'll, get, we'll put um, it in perspective. No, they have a lot of debt. And so people, a year ago, people thought they were gonna go out, out of business, file for bankruptcy. Um, they're obviously very much tied to interest rates as you know, people in the US need to get auto loans in order for them to do business business with Carvana. And so um, they, they have something like 35% um, short interest in this stock right now, even after they've had this big run from like three bucks a share a year ago to uh, in the, you know, around 50 bucks today, far below their 2021 highs of around 400 bucks per share. And, um, you know, now that people see that relief coming in with Fed rate cuts, um, it's causing the shorts to cover. It's causing people to say bankruptcy's off the table. Um, you know, let's look ahead and see what's you know uh, what's a true underlying value for Carvana taking the bankruptcy risk off. And what I also like about them is they saw massive insider buying a year ago, not just from the CEO, but from several other people on the management team. So, mm-hmm. so they, they wouldn't have done that if they thought that uh, you know they were going to see that money evaporate themselves. So 